morning, Berwick. God bless you today. Today, we're here to spread the good news of the gospel. The good news about Jesus Christ. He loves you, cares for you. Wants a relationship with every human being. So I've come here today to speak to all those who have ears to hear and tell you that the Prince of Peace, the Promised One, the Saviour of this world, is here today. And if you will open your heart to Him, confess Him with your mouth, you will be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. about today, people, is how's your heart going? What has this life dished up to you, people of Berwick? Take a look at your life. Are you satisfied with what the world has given you? Are you satisfied with the way your life has gone so far? Are there things on your life that you would like to change if you haven't as yet been able to make that change. You haven't been able to get on top of things, to overcome things that are ruling your life, things like addictions, bondages. Amen. Another one. That's the second person in two minutes has come by and given us a thumbs up. That's because there's good news to be spread. And we're spreading the good news today in Burwood, New South Wales. Hallelujah. So back to our life. How's it going? Take stock of your life, people. Sometimes things are dished up to us in life that we don't ask for, that we don't deserve. Sometimes it's a result of our, our parents. Because perhaps they were hurt, perhaps they were abused, perhaps all sorts of things happen to people we tend to pass it on. We tend to pass it on to our children. We don't even want to do that, but it happens. That's life. And people are looking for solutions. They're looking for ways to ease the pain. How can I stop the pain? How can I change my life? How can I stop hurting other people? And we're usually not able to do it. We're helpless not able to do it. So we continue on, hurting people, hurting ourselves, abusing our bodies in many instances. So people try and get relief. They take drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. They start to sleep around, partying, whatever it takes to stop the pain, whatever it takes to stop the shame in many cases. We do shameful things in secret but God sees it all he sees everything we do in secret he knows us better than we know ourselves he's numbered every hair on our head so what do we do people try all sorts of things they go to psychiatrists psychologists personal development people positive thinkers all those things are tried but nothing seems to help but I'm here to tell you today, there is one who does more than help. He's the healer. He's the one that sets the captive free. He's the one that gives you peace. He's the one that can take the bondages off your life and deliver you, set you free, give you new life. Restore your relationship with the God of this universe because that relationship was damaged, that relationship was broken down and destroyed when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. God said to Adam, Genesis 2, 17, he said, if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. And that's what happened. But when we read on in Genesis, it says that Adam continued to live in, up to something like 900 years old. 
Though he didn't die physically, but he died spiritually. And every other person born after him was born under that curse, was born under that death of the spirit, even though they live physically. And if you are not born again to the spirit of God today, that is your state. You are in a state of spiritual death. But you don't have to be, because Jesus Christ left his throne in glory, came to this earth, took the curse upon himself. He was a sinless sacrifice that was required to restore mankind to God. And he did that. He separated himself from his father. He became man. He became God in the flesh. And he gave his life. He gave his life as a sacrifice acceptable to God for all mankind, for your sin and my sin. He covered it all, took it upon himself. He did it for every person. He cares for every person. He loves you. If you're a human being today, he cares for you so much. He's got me here telling you the good news of the gospel. That your spirit does not have to be inactive and dead, but it can be alive. You can be a new creation on the inside. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new, and your life can be different. You will have power over sin. You'll have power over bondage. You'll have power to live a life holy and righteous before a holy and righteous God. He'll do that all for you, and he'll do it for free. There's nothing you can do. You cannot pay for it. You cannot buy it. You cannot earn it. There is nothing you can do but receive it. Receive it from the Lord Jesus Christ today. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants new life for you. You have to do something. He's already done it. So what happened? You're born under the curse. Every one of us. When you become born again, your spirit is made alive. You are empowered on the inside to live your life differently. New life. New desires on the inside. A new way of living. It's for every person. It's free. He says, come to me. I am the Prince of Peace. I am the Promised One. Come to me. It's all done. I've covered your sin. But you might say, I've, I've led a good life. I haven't really hurt anybody. In fact, I've helped a lot of people. Why would I not get into heaven? It's a little bit like this. God is just. He's also merciful. But he's just. There has to be a penalty for sin. If there were no penalty for sin, people like Adolf Hitler could walk straight into heaven and say, let me in. It must be justice for every sin. And there must be a penalty paid. Somebody has to pay it. Jesus Christ paid it for you and for me. That's the free gift of salvation. So people of Burwood, open your heart to Jesus Christ. Your life will never be the same again. He'll lift those bondages off your life. Those things that have been ruining your relationship. Once you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, every relationship that you have will be better. You'll learn what true love is. You'll learn what unselfish love is. We talk about love now. We say, I'm in love with this person. What does that mean? Does it mean you want something from them? Or you want to give something to them? When we have a fall in love with somebody in this world, we have a honeymoon period, everything's beautiful. We can put, speak with them for 12 hours a day. No problem. But then the commitment comes. We have to have committed love, which is much, much tougher. We're not willing any longer to give up of ourselves. We want everything for me, me, me. And that's when the problem starts. 50% of marriages fail. All these beautiful weddings happening on Sunday and the photos and the, the bridesmaids and all that. 50% of them fail. And it's because we don't really know the meaning of the word love. 
Only God is love. Only God can give you a love that lasts. Every marriage that's ever lasted is based on love. And that love comes from God. People think it's from themselves. We get very puffed up as human beings. We think we can do it all. Some of that is because we were made in the image of God. But that's not the answer. Pride is something that gets in the way. Sin gets in the way. Spoils the relationship with God. Separates us from God. Yet we have no power over sin. People think they have sin. Rules, rules our lives. Just take stock of your own life. What is ruling your life? Is it bondage? Are you in bondage to something? Sexual immorality? Pornography? What's ruining your life? What's running your life? You can be free of all that. The Lord Jesus Christ can set you free, but you have to open the door to him. He's knocking at the door of your life today, people of Berwick. If you will open the door of your life and let him in, he said, I will come in and I will suck with you. And believe me, your life will never be the same again. There's no one like our God. There's no one like Jesus Christ. You will have a friend who will never forsake you. He will never let you down. And when you're in the middle of a crisis, he'll be there. He'll be the one. He's a God who cannot lie. He's a promise keeper. He's faithful. He's loyal. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll give you new life if you have to open the door. He will not force you. He does not want slaves. He wants people who will come willingly to him and love him. And he will love you. Draw near to him, he will draw near to you. He's not going to lay everything out at the feet of a human being and say, please come and, and be with me. No. No. He is God. He is creator of this universe. It is for us to come to him. We need him. He does not need us. But he is merciful and kind and loving to us. And he cares for every person. If you're breathing in and out at the moment, if your heart is beating, God loves you, God cares for you. God wants a relationship with you. Open your heart to him. Open your life to him. Give him your life. Look at your life. Tell me if you're happy with it. Tell me if you're struggling. Tell me if you're more than satisfied with the way things are going, the, the relationship you have the way you're treating your significant other. Is it okay or is it not okay? Check your heart. Look at it before God. Is it clean? It can be. Your heart can be clean before God. If you will open your heart to Him, if you will humble yourself, that's what's required. Get over the pride, get over the sin, humble yourself before God. Open your heart to Him. He will come in, He will stop with you. He will cause change in your life. You will be a better person by knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. People of Burwood, he is knocking at the door of your life. Open the door to him. He loves you. He cares for you. He knows all your secrets. He knows everything about you. All those things that you've done. He knows your shame. He knows your guilt. He'll take it all off your life and give you a new life, a new start clean on the inside, a clean slate, a new way of living, a better way in your relationship. You'll be more loving. You'll have more peace and joy and self-control. How many of us have got self-control? We're doing things out of hand. People are watching pornography all hours of the night, doing disgusting, shameful things with their bodies. That's not control. People have fits of anger. They're out yelling at people fighting, drinking alcohol, totally out of control. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ, be born of his spirit. He will give you the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. He'll give it all to you. It'll start to bubble up out of the inside of you because it's, it's what what's on the inside because God comes on the inside of you that's the way you have it's hard to believe but it's true I can testify to it God lives on the inside of me God is my saviour 
He's the one that set me free. And he'll set every captive free. You must look at your life today, people of Burwood. Take stock. Look deeply into yourself. There are things in your life that you want changed but you are unable to change. Things that have consequences. Things that are causing you to sin. And every time you sin, you're storing up the wrath of God for the day of judgment because every person will stand before, the living and the dead will stand before the creator of this universe in judgment. And what will you say? When every thought, every word, every deed is put up before God, it's all going to be there. Everything you've done, everything you've said, Everything, every hurt that you've done to people, whether you want, whether you meant it or not, doesn't matter. We've committed things. We've all committed things in our lives, and they're all going to be up before God. He's going to say to you, why would I let you into my heaven? There's no sin in my heaven. Look at all this sin. Sin, a lifetime of sin. Why would I let you into my heaven? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? I led the good... I tried my best, I tried to help the poor, I, I didn't really mean to hurt anybody, but I, I did, I hurt them in my life, I didn't mean it. None of that's going to fly people. Somebody has to pay the penalty for sin. Somebody has to take your sin upon themselves. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are born of his spirit, you will stand before God on that day of judgment. And all those sins will be exposed. And Jesus Christ will say, I know this person, I have covered his sin, I have taken the curse upon myself. This person can now go and be in the presence of God for eternity. But if you do not know him, there's another place that's reserved for the Satan and his angels. And that's where we head, if we do not know Jesus. Be afraid, people. Be afraid, because sometimes fear is a good thing. Fear can be a good thing. If you were standing on the edge of a cliff, just two feet away and thousands of feet below you were jagged rocks, and fear said to you, step back, then fear would be a good thing. I'm saying, fear what eternity will be without knowing God. Fear it. Let that help you. Come to Him. Come to a saving knowledge of Him. He has not made it difficult. The only thing that's difficult is what gets in the road, and that's sin and pride and embarrassment. Forget about embarrassment. On the day of judgment, none of these people will be around you. You'll be standing by yourself in front of the God of this universe, trying to explain the sin in your life. None of these people will be here. Forget about embarrassment. Forget about pride. It's going to be just you standing before God, every single person. And he's going to judge you if you do not have an advocate, if you do not have the Lord Jesus Christ standing beside you. This is why I'm here today. I'm sounding the alarm, people. I'm saying this is urgent. You need to listen. Your eternal destiny is at stake. People turn away and they say, that's not for me. That's just some guy bashing the Bible, yelling on a microphone. I'm doing it because I care for you. I'm doing it because God cares for you. I could be anywhere. I could be at the beach, anywhere at all, but I'm not. I'm here, sounding the alarm, because God cares about you. He cares about you more than you care about yourself. Do not despise what he's doing. He loves you. He cares for you. The Lord Jesus Christ is your saviour. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the promised one. He's the one who has taken away the sin of the world. He's taken your sin upon himself, people. I am sounding the alarm. If you were in a burning building and I said, get out, that's an alarm. But it's up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to you to do something. You have to open the door of your life to him. I can't do it for you. God has given you free will. And free will can take you all the way to the pit of hell. And God will not stop you because you have free will. But he doesn't desire that. He doesn't desire that you will go there. He wants you to have a saving knowledge of him. And spend your eternity in the presence of God. It's for everybody. But you must open your 
you must open the door. He can't do any more and tell you. I can't do any more and tell you and sound the alarm. This is important, people. This is your eternal destiny at stake. People think they've got all sorts of ways to heaven. There is only one way to heaven, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one. He's the only mediator between God and man. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's you, that's me, whosoever would believe on him will have eternal life and will not perish. But if you don't believe, you will perish. What does that mean? It means when something perishes, it's dried up, it's withered, it has no hope. But today I'm telling you, there is hope. There is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you, cares for you, wants a relationship with you. He already knows you, but you need to get to know him. When you get your head on your pillow tonight, open your heart to him. Ask him to come in. He will. He'll wash away all your sin. He'll set you free. He'll give you new power. Power over bondages. Power over sin. Power over those things that have been destroying your life. He'll take them all off you. And he'll make you free. He sets the captive free, people. Listen to him. Open your ears. Do not despise what God is saying to you today. He cares for you. He loves you. He loves you enough to send his very own son. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Nobody comes to the Father but by him. There's only one way and it's easy. Religion has done terrible things to people's minds. It's saying, I know all about Christianity. I don't want you to deal with it. And I don't blame you. This, you know, religion has done terrible things. The pedophilia and the, you know, the wars and the things that religion has caused. I am not a religious person. I do not believe in religion. I believe in Jesus Christ. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And the poor people in this world were followers of Jesus Christ and followed his ways and acted like he acted we would not have wars, we would not have pain, we would not have the sorrow that we have in this world. But he offers you a new and a living way. He's done it all. He's done it for you. He's done it for me. He cares more than you care for yourself. He cares for you. I could be anywhere today. I could be sitting on the beach at right in the sands enjoying the, the cup of coffee, but I'm here telling you because I love you and I don't even know you, I've never seen you before in my life, but I love you because God loves you and God cares for you. And I'm sounding the alarm because I care what happens to your eternal destiny, even if you do not, I care for it. I want you to hear, please open your ears people, do not close yourself from what God is saying. He has open arms to you today, open arms of love and he'll wrap those arms around you and give you peace in your heart, you'll heal your, your hurts, you'll take things off your life that, you, that have been ruining your life, he'll do it all for you, but you have to give him a chance, you have to do it, it's your free will, it's your free will, he will not, he will not cover that, he will not go against your free will, that's not his desire, his desire is that you would be saved, that you would be set free, that you would have new life. You must do it, people. Hallelujah. There's one God, one living God, and he's here today by his spirit, Bowen. He's here by his spirit today, people of Bowen. He loves you, he cares for you. There's no God like our God. He is, he is magnificent and holy and righteous and merciful. His mercy endures forever we don't we can't fathom the love of god and he would send his very own son would you die for a friend someone who's sworn at you and cursed you and used all sorts of four letter words and with your name would you die for them would you die for your enemies no maybe a mother would die for her child i don't know but the God of this universe sent his own son to this earth to die so that we could be free, so we could have new life. He didn't deserve it. He did nothing. He was sinless. We deserved it. But he took our place. 
we deserve to burn in hellfire, but Jesus Christ has given us a way through, he's given us a new life, a new way. Because he cares, he cares for this world. People blame God for everything. Every time you hear something going wrong, why is all this evil in the world? If God was so wonderful, why is all this evil here? Why is it so quick to blame God? It's not God. It's Satan. Satan's the one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. New life for everybody. Amen. Amen. Okay. I don't blame my God for the things in this world that are done by man with their sinful nature and by the God of this world, little g, Satan. He's the one. He's the one that's causing this. But Jesus Christ has made a way back to the Father. We can go back to the garden, people. Back to the Garden of Eden where before Adam fell, had a relationship with God. Walked in the garden with God. Walked and talked with the creator of this universe. That can come back if you believe. If you open your heart to him, and have your spirit activated, your spirit made new by him. He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, no one comes to the Father but by me. You must be born again. You must be. He didn't say it's a good idea. He said you must be born again. If you are not born again, your eternal destiny is not secure. People are so interested in all sorts of stuff around the place but their eternal life is going down the gurgler why will people not listen to the good news of the gospel it's good news people how much good news you had lately there's so much fear in the world afraid of this and afraid of that and some fool on the other side of the world pressing the button and nuclear war is right in our doorstep that's the stupidity of this world and there's so much fear how am i going to pay my bills Will I lose my job? All this fear. God, when you come to him and receive him into your heart, he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but I've given you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind and of self-control. You're able to control yourself. How many people can truly say they're in control of themselves? People are up late at night watching all sorts of filth on the screen. Is that control? Is that controlling yourself? Or is that out of control? Take stock of your life. Have a look at yourself. God will deliver you from all that. He'll lift all that off your life. Come to him. Come today. Come and pray with me. Receive him into your heart. Your life will never be the same again. New life. A new start. A clean slate on the inside. Access to the Father, the creator of this heaven and earth and everything in it. He's the one that you get to know. He already knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows every hair on your head. He's got them numbered. He knows everything, every secret you've got, every bondage that's on your life, and he'll set you free. He'll give you new life. He loves you. He cares for you. Come to him. He'll give you new life. People don't realise. If they realise what this really meant, what I'm saying to you, if you could suddenly realise it, you'd crawl across this road over broken glass to get to God, to get to his salvation. But people don't realise how good this is. Give him a go. Open your heart. How's it going so far? It's much, much better. A better proposition. And you have to do it. He's not going to force you. He just he loves you. He cares for you. He's God. God wants a relationship. He already knows you. He knows every hair in your head. But you need to get to know him. Are you born in the spirit? Are you born, are you born again? I'm going to try my
I, I, as I was walking up, I heard a woman, like, I think she was mumbling about the fact that that's what it sounded like. And I'm like, I'm not saying anything. I'm not really happy with what she said, but this is my, uh, this is my place. I let her keep walking and then I'm like, If you're a human being here today, if your heart is beating, if you're breathing in and out, God loves you. God guides you. God has given you a way back to the Father that we didn't have before. He is a good God. Get to know Him. He already knows you. Knows every hair on your head. Get to know Him. You'll wash away all your sins. Take stock of your life, people of Berwick. Have a look at your life. If you're happy with it now, there's not much I can do. But if there's things in your life that you are not happy with, things that are ruining your life, that are ruining your life, and you want freedom, and you want the love of God in your heart, He will do that for you. He died to set you free. Every person every human being some people say i don't need god they just keep walking but one day we will all stand before god and you need an advocate you need a friend you need someone who will never leave you nor forsake you he cares for you he loves you wants you to get to know him you have a relationship and every relationship that you have will be better when you have a relationship with the creator of this universe. He made heaven and earth and everything in it, including you and I. He knows you. He knows all about you. And he wants you to get to know him. He's done it all. He sent his son to this earth to carry the curse upon himself. Jesus did not deserve to die on the cross. We did. We deserve to die. We are the ones that are in sin. We need him. But he came out of heaven. He died a terrible death and he did it for us. And he's made the way back to the Father. The Holy of Holies is open again. The veil has been rent from top to bottom. Hallelujah. There's no judgment anymore when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He takes it upon himself. The curse of Adam is upon him. When Adam died, when Adam died spiritually in the garden, and he disobeyed God, the entire world came under that disobedient spirit. It's called the sinful nature. Every person is born with it. And there's no way to get that off yourself unless you believe in him believe in him believe in the lord jesus christ and you will be saved john 3 3 says you must be born again if you don't know what that means come and talk to me but it means that your spirit will be made alive on the inside of you and you will be empowered to live a holy and righteous life this is not about religion this is not about 
working your way to heaven. There's nothing you can do to get to heaven. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. And there's no one comes to the Father but by me. Listen up, people. There's only one way to heaven. And God has made it easy. He says, if you're heavy laden, come to me. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. He's made the way. He's done it all for you. You can't do anything but receive him into your heart. And as you do, you will be changed. You will be empowered to live your life. You will be empowered to live your life and it will be better than what you've got now. Take stock of your life. Are you happy with it? Are you happy with what life has fished up for you? Or do you want something better? You want a better life. You want better relationships. You want to know that you have eternal security. People are dying every day. This is a serious matter. Every time I click my fingers, thousands of people are dying. 150,000 people a day die in this world. Young people, middle-aged people, older people, they're all dying. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? If you cannot say for sure that you are going to spend eternity, then you are in danger. I'm here to sound the alarm today. I'm here to tell you there is a way that you can have security in your heart about where, you, where you're going in eternity. People think that religion will get them to eternity. They think religion will get them to heaven. It's doing good work. The Bible says that your righteousness is filthy rags. It's only through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can do. Pride in your heart says that you can do something. Pride in your heart says you can lead a good life and you should go to heaven. It's not going to work, people. On the day of judgment, you will be standing before God. You will need an advocate. You will need a friend. If you do not know Jesus, you're in trouble. People of Burwood today, I'm sounding the alarm. I'm saying, listen up. People think they do not need God it's because they do not know. They're not aware. If you knew, you would fall across the ground and say, God, save me. Save me, Lord. The consequences are terrible. And the consequences are not meant for you. They're meant for the devil and his angels. That's where hell is with gnashing of teeth. With the worm never dies. When there's eternal thirst and separation from God. That's not meant for human beings. God wants you to be in heaven with him, to be in his presence for eternity. There's only one way to do that. Open your heart to God. When you get your head on your pillow tonight, open your heart, ask him into your heart. You will be saved. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you will be saved, people. You think, what does that mean? Who cares? You think, who cares? I'm doing all right. Really? Have a look at your life. Be honest with yourself. Are there things in your life that you're not happy with? What has this world dished up to you? Is there hurt on your life? Is there bitterness in your heart? Is there unforgiveness in your heart? This world, you don't get through it unscathed. God will be your friend. He will heal you. He will lift those things off your life. He'll give you a new start, a clean slate. You have to give him a go. He can't do any more. He wants you to open your heart. He will come in. Do not despise what the living God is saying to you today, people of Burwood. He cares for every one of you. I could be anywhere in the world at the moment, but I'm here. Look at me. I could be sitting on Brighton the Sands having a cup of coffee. I could be anywhere at all watching a movie, but I'm not. I'm here sounding the alarm because I care for you. Why do I care for you? I don't even know you. I've never seen you before in my life. And you may never hear this message again. Listen up, people. This is important. Your eternal destiny is at stake. People scoff and they laugh. They will not scoff when they're standing before the living God on the day of judgment. And, and you're deciding where you will go, where you will spend eternity. Open your heart to him. He will make this life more abundant. And he will secure you with eternal life in the next life. Why do people not care about it? They're more interested in watching TikTok, mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, YouTube shorts, all that stuff. Feeding garbage into your mind, garbage in, garbage out. So what happens? They're trying to escape. Escape everything. It's all about escape. It's all about making me feel better. Me, me, me. All about me. 
if you thought it's enough about yourself, you get saved. So you, that's the most selfish thing you could probably do, but you need to do it. Amen. God loves every person. And these people here, you might say, what's this guy yelling about? What's he yelling about? We can't even speak English. This is what it's about. Look, God loves, look, behind him. They're not even listening. Look, not even listening. Unbelievable. God loves you. More important things. What's on for young Shah today? What are we having for dinner? We need to fill our bellies. That's what's important. No, it's not. You need your spirit. You need your life. Save your eternal life is at stake, people. God, then you look. Here it is. God. God loves you. God loves you. What's it come in your heart? Are you, are you from Korea? Come some nida. Come some nida. No, no, okay. God loves you, okay? What I'm trying to say to these people is that the God of this universe loves you. Wants to come into your heart. But you have to open your heart. He will not force himself upon you. He loves you. He does not want slaves. He wants people who will come with their free will. And by their free will, open their heart to God. He will come in. He will change your life. You will never know a friend like him. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. In the middle of a crisis, he'll be there. When you need him most, when you need a friend, a lot of friends will bail out on you, but God will never bail out on you. He will always be with you. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants your eternal destiny secured. But you have to do something. You have to open your door. Nobody else can do it. I can't do it for you. If I could get down on my knees and beg you and if that would work, I would do it. But that's not going to do it. It's up to you. You have a free will. People are bowing. I'm telling you, God loves you. If you have ears to hear today, open your ears, open your heart. Young people, this is a toxic world, this is a hard world to live in. You're getting drawn away by all sorts of things. Pornography, things that draw you away. You're watching the screen late at night doing shameful things to yourself. You don't have to do that. God will set you free from that. He'll cause you to live a holy and a righteous life before him. He'll change the desires of your heart. He'll give you new desires on the inside, but you must give him a chance. He will not force himself. You have free will. You can free will yourself into the pit of hell and he will not stop you. But that is not his desire. His desire is that none should perish, but all should come to a saving knowledge of him. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. But you have to do something. I'm sounding the alarm today, people. Listen up. Like you're in a burning building and I'm telling you, get out. Get out of that building. If you don't choose to get out, that's your. That's back on you. You have heard the gospel. You've heard the good news that God Almighty, once you saved, he sent his son to this earth for you. The son did not deserve to have the sin of the world, your sin to put upon him, my sin. But he took it upon himself so that we could be free. Listen up, people. You need to appreciate what the living God has done for you. I'm here to tell you I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of what Jesus Christ has done. And I speak it boldly. Because God loves every person. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to get to know him. He already knows everything about you. Knows your heart. Knows the things you've done. People say my sin is too great. God will not forgive me. He will forgive you. I'm telling you, he will forgive you. There's no sin too deep to keep you from a relationship with Jesus Christ. But you need to humble yourself. This is the hard bit. People are so proud. They're full of themselves. They say... Why should I humble myself before God? That's the only way. Humble yourself and He will lift you up. You want to lift yourself up? It'll keep you from God. It'll separate you from God. Sin will separate you from God. Sin is separating you, but it doesn't have to. Jesus will wash it all away. He'll give you new life. He'll give you a new start. You will never be the same again. But you have to do something people are burdened. I'm here because I care for you, and I really do not know you. I care for you because God cares for you. It's not by mistake that you're here today. It's a divine appointment. Listen up, people. Seek him while he may be found. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to any person. Seek him while he may be found. He loves you. He cares for you. There's no one like my God. 
and he can be your God. What he's done for me, he'll do for you. I'm here to testify the goodness of God today. I'm saying he, he's the promised one. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's no one like our God. There's no one can do what he has done. He's the only one that's risen again. Other religions. Religion will not get you to heaven. Do not be fooled, people. People think, oh, I went to church and I helped the poor and I did this and I did that. I've never really hurt anyone. None of that means anything. Religion will not get you to church. Or get you to heaven, sorry. Church will not get you to heaven. None of those things. It's only through Jesus Christ. And it's only if you will open your heart to him. Repent of your sins and come to him. People say, I don't want to repent of my sins. I like sinning. I like pornography. I like sleeping around. I like drinking. I like smoking. It's good fun. It's dangerous, people. There are consequences for sin. Every time you sin, you store up the wrath of God against you. And the layers of sin get deeper and deeper and deeper. Until you don't even know you're sinning in the end. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him your heart. Let him wash you on the inside. All things will be made new. You'll be a new creation. Why do people not want that? Why are they happy living in the, the pit of their own existence at this time? Wake up, people. You have an opportunity here today. An opportunity to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you today, people of Burwood. There's not enough love in the world. There's this Mickey Mouse thing they call love. Something that they conjured up out of 38 TV series of some garbage love thing. That's not love. That's a ridiculous love. It disappears as soon as the heat comes. It leaves the kitchen. It gets too hot. But the love of God will never leave you. The love of God will be with you through and through. He'll stay the course. The love of God is enduring. His mercy endures forever. He'll wrap his arms around you. You will never be the same again. Hallelujah. People of Berwick, I'm here to tell you that God loves you. That God cares about you. That it's not by accident that you're here today. He's here. You're here. I'm here because of God's divine appointment. The Holy Spirit of the living God is in Burwood today and he's speaking to people's hearts. And if you sense a conviction on your heart that there is a need, there's a void in your heart that cannot be filled by anything else but the Spirit of God, that's normal. And it's only when you're born of his Spirit that that void is filled and you start to get a sense of completion in your life. Look at yourself. Is there something missing? Analyze yourself, people. Time for a bit of navel gazing. Look at yourself. Look at you. Do some navel gazing. Think a bit deeply about yourself. Don't just think about what's for lunch. That's not going to save you eternally. Don't think about how I'm going to pay my bills. Don't think about any of those things. Think about your eternal destiny. We all have an eternal destiny. People say, oh, I'm just going to go on the ground. Yeah, really? 80 years, all that wisdom, all that experience just goes to nothing? What was that all about? What a waste of time. You're a spirit. You're going to live forever. And you're going to live somewhere. Make sure you know where you're going to live. There's an assurance that's given to you. When Jesus Christ comes into your heart, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, where you're going to be in eternity. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you will be in the presence of God. Can you say that today, people? I'm challenging you. I want you to think. I want you to think because I care for you. And I do not know you, but God cares for you. That's why he's got me here speaking to you today. Think about it. Why would you risk eternity without God? Why would you risk it? You don't have to. He's made it easy. He says, open your heart. Believe on me. Confess me with your mouth. You will be saved. Listen, people, so important. I'm not being paid for this, okay? I'm getting nothing for this. I'm doing it because God loves you enough. They have me out here making a clown out of myself. I don't care, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed because your eternal destiny is at stake. 
not mine, I know where I'm going, I'm certain. God has testified to me where I will be, and he'll do the same for you if you give him a chance. Why do people stop? Why do they don't care where they're going to spend eternity? Do you not care enough for yourself? Do you not care enough for yourself to think about where you're going to spend eternity? You think it's all just going to be all right and God will just say, come on in, bring all your sin with you. I gave you a chance. I had someone there preaching the gospel and you didn't listen. Listen, people. Listen. If you've heard the gospel and you reject it, that's on you. That's not on God. That's on you. You hear the gospel today and the gospel is that if you will open your heart and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, you will be saved. If you reject him, that is on you. You have a free will. You can free will yourself into the pit of hell. God will not stop you. But he does not desire that. He wants every person to come to a saving knowledge of him. It's up to you. It's up to you. You have a free will. You're made in the image of God. He's given you free will. He does not want slaves. He does not want robots. He wants people who will love him and allow them, him to love them. It's called a relationship, it's not a religion. Nothing to do with religion and people trying to work their way to heaven and shape up their, their terrible life into something acceptable by God. None of that means anything. Jesus has done it all. He's done 100% of it. He cannot add to it. He cannot take anything away from it. Why do we try? It's pride. Pride says, I've got to do something. Pride says, I've got to work. I've got to do some work that will get me to heaven. Every religion is held in bondage by that. And how much is enough? How much is enough? Is this enough work or this much or this much? None of that means anything. You've got to get it right, people. This is so important. Life is short. Life is passing. Every one of us dies. We've got to get our heart right with God. Okay? Heart right with God. Yeah? Amen. Amen. Okay. For God so loved the world, this world, God so loved her with, God so loved every person that can hear my voice. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Can you imagine God, sinless God, leaving heaven, coming to this earth, taking the sin of the world upon himself? Why did he do it? Why would he do it? For such an ungrateful mankind who don't care. Everyone I'm looking at now, everyone's too busy thinking about something else not about your eternal destiny. I'm here to awaken you, to alert you people about your eternal destiny. Why do you not listen? I know you are listening, and I hope that you hear the Word of God today. I hope the Spirit of God has touched you enough for you to think about it, and when you get your head on your pillow tonight, that you open your heart to Him, that you invite Him in, and you will have a most wonderful relationship with the creator of this universe, the one that created the heaven and the earth and everything in it. You'll come to know him, he'll come to know you. Life will never be the same again. He'll take bondages off your life, he'll give you a new, new purpose and a new plan in life. The God of this universe loves you, wants a relationship with you, cares for you, he'll make every family relationship better. If you get to know him, he'll he will make your relationship better. Who doesn't want a better relationship? Who's done everything right in their relationship? Put your hand up. Nobody can. We've all hurt the people that care for us most. They're forgiving at others. But when you have God in your life, things are different. The relationship is different. I'm not talking about religion. Religion has done a lot of damage. Religion is a pretend, a pretend follower of Christ. We must be a Christian. And a Christian is a follower of Christ. If we all did what Jesus did when he was on this earth, there wouldn't be hurt, there wouldn't be wars. He will do that in your heart if you let him. Not about church, it's not about religion, it's not about doing good works, forget all that. It's about opening your heart, it's about humbling yourself before God Almighty. He'll do it for you people. Don't bother thinking about dinner tonight or what you're doing now. Everyone's got different thoughts in their mind. Think about your eternal life. That's why I'm here to alert you today. I'm here yelling on the corner. I could be anywhere, but I care for you because God cares for you. 
He's got me here telling you. This is for your benefit, not mine. For your benefit. Receive the love of God. Receive the caring that he has done for you today. He cares about every human being. If you're breathing, if you have a heartbeat, he cares about you. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. Don't despise him. Why do we reject such a loving God? Such a God who has his arms outstretched to you. He wants to take you in his arms and care for you and heal your hurts and deliver you from bondage and give you a life and life more abundantly on this earth and then give you an eternal life in his presence. Why do we, why do we despise him? Why do we turn away? What is it, people? What's keeping you from God? I'll tell you what's keeping you from God. It's sin. You have layers of sin on your life. We keep sinning more and more, building up the wrath of God for the day of judgment. But it doesn't have to be that way. He's, he's made an answer. He's made a way. He says, I am the truth, the light, and the way, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. Open your heart to him, people. He loves you, and he cares for you today. People of Berwick, be blessed of God today. Open your heart to him. When your head's on your pillow tonight, open your heart, give him a go. Your life will never be the same again. My God is a promise keeper. This world will break every promise. Your friends will break promises to you. God will not break a promise ever. He cannot. He is not a man that he should lie. Man can lie. Man can break a promise. God cannot. He cannot. And young people, you need God in your life. This is a toxic world. There are things that will draw you away. Things like pornography that will take your life and put you in bondage. You say, it feels good, oh, it feels good. It'll take you deeper and deeper until you can't get out of it. Let me tell you, God will deliver you from it. God will give you a life that will be clean and righteous before him. New desires on the inside. That stuff is terrible. Terrible for your life. He promises much more than that, but you have to come to him. Consider him. Consider what he's saying to you. Understand? This world is a very difficult place to live in. You need a friend. You need a saviour to save your soul. In Jesus' name I'm speaking. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I pray for every person that has heard my voice today. I pray that every person that has seen would be planted deep in their heart, that someone would water, and I know God's promises, that he will make it grow. For the people that have heard, the people that have heard the word of God today, open your heart, open your heart. God loves you. I pray that each person would receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. That's why I'm here today. I pray the Spirit of God would move in every way necessary. That the power of the enemy is bound over God. Bound over every person that I've spoken to. Every person that's heard my voice. In Jesus' name. Amen.